Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for being on the show. Really yeah, cool. yeah, you're uh, you're very welcome. Thanks for reaching out to me. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. So I'm going to start with a little disclaimer here. Uh, the materials and content discussed within this uh, show are the opinions of Rick Jansen and or the guests being interviewed. This information is intended as general information only for listeners of the show. Listeners should conduct their own diligence and research before making any business decisions. The show is produced completely independently of eXp Realty and is not endorsed, funded, or otherwise supported by eXp Realty directly or indirectly. Now, on to the show. I'm Rick right. Jackson, host of TopCloudAgents.com, and this is Jerry Sheets. Jerry is with eXp Realty, and he is an icon agent. And Jerry, those, of you, uh, those listening who might not be familiar with you, can you give us a little background on who you are, where you do work, and what you do? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, like I said, my name is Jerry Sheets. I'm uh, over here in beautiful tropical Delaware uh, right now. Um, yes, I've been uh, born and raised here. My background is not in real estate, probably just like most people. Um, I used to do architectural design. So that was my drafting with my trade. I moved into custom home design, uh, worked with a lot of custom home builders, a lot of uh, community builders in our area back in the 2000s and um, all the way up until 2015 um, when I got my real estate license. So okay. I, I just wrapped up my third year in real estate. Wow. Third year, you're already with EXP, you're already an icon agent. Uh, give us a little more insight into that. So, uh, yeah, <clears throat> um, good friend of mine, Nicole Babenko, uh, she was an EXP agent. She was pretty new. Um, she went to a, at least one other brokerage I know before she joined EXP. Um, when I got licensed, you know, her, Nicole and I had chatted a little bit. She told me about EXP and, you know, after a 15, 20 minute conversation, it was a pretty much a no brainer. Um, and now you, where were you before EXP? I, nowhere. That, this, that was my first, this is my first brokerage, first and only brokerage I've ever been with. So you've been with EXP for three years? <clears throat> That's correct. Great. I was an agent 700 and something. I can't remember the exact number, but somewhere around the 700s. Uh, wow. when I, You're like uh, EXP folks, that's old school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, absolutely. Um, so three years and, and what made it a no brainer? I mean, it, it was kind of a risk back then. I don't see it as a risk now. I mean, now you either see it and you get it or you don't. Yeah. Yeah. When you're in the seven hundreds, that was kind of a risky deal. What made it a no brainer for you? Yeah. So honestly, you know, I, I love the fact that it was uh, that you got the stock. I love the rev revenue share opportunity that was there. Um, to me, you know, I knew I was going to be able to sell houses um, and it was all about the 80-20 split. And honestly, it was only $50 a month technology fee, you know, coming from one job to the next. The scary thing was not having business, going to another brokerage, having a, a desk fee that was hundreds of dollars a month and no pipeline. So it was like, well, here's a way that I could actually afford to be a real estate agent while I build my pipeline up you know, up until I'm having some good income and I'm going to keep most of my money per transaction. Those two things were, were literally it. That, that was, that was the deciding factor. The other things I said, I kind of stuck in my back pocket and said, these are great and I'm going to leverage them later on. But right now let's just get the business going. Yeah. And what I love about that story, Jerry, cause I'm, I'm learning your story just as other people are here too. And what I love about that is not only were you were not only with a new company, but you were a new agent. Yep. So some people might say, wow, well, Jerry's an icon agent. I can't relate to him. He's doing you know, over 3 million in sales and over 25 transactions or whatever you might be doing. And we'll get into those details in a little bit. <laughs> but you came on as a brand new agent. And there are yeah. other firms that offer training, that offer, you know, we'll, we'll coach you, coddle you. But you said, hey, eXp has enough. What was that? And that was before probably the, the cloud was as advanced and sophisticated as it is now. Yeah, it was definitely diff it was definitely different. Um, it wasn't this version right now. Um, and even that, I, I love that technology that everything was there. Um, I could see it, you know, I'm a little bit more of a forward thinker. And I, I think I, I'm not young by any means, but I think the average across the country, the average age of the real estate agent is like 55. Um, and I think that's that age that just might not, might not be ready to test different waters yet. Yeah. Um, I'm not there. So I jumped all in and all I needed, all I knew was I have a license. I could sell real estate and I'll make it work, you know? So, so yeah, just kind of jumping in right, right from there. And as, as a new agent, 
Uh, everybody's interested always, especially heading into a, a, a more typical common market. Some might say it's even approaching a buyer's market in some areas. What everybody wants to know, lead gen. So here's Jerry, brand new agent. Yeah. Uh, you know, either as a new agent or, you know, for 2019, what are you doing for lead generation? All right. So I love talking about this. Um, awesome. And if anybody was in a couple, I've done it a couple of times in the past when I've hit my icon, I've, I've given a class in the cloud on kind of how I built my business, ramped it up from nothing to icon. Um, and and it, it can get a lot more detail, but basically still to this day, I would say 90% of my business is organic. It's just real relationships. I don't spend a ton of money on leads. I didn't even need, I still don't need to do that. Um, I didn't need to do that for the first two years, most definitely. Um, I recognize very quick that real estate is about relationships. And no matter how uh, technologically advanced we get in this industry, it all comes back to real relationships with human beings. And <clears throat> I feel like if you want to beat the technology, right, the, the lead generating systems that everybody's trying to get you to buy into, you just have to be more human. And that's essentially what I did. We, you know, Delaware's a small state. I live in an even smaller town. Um, you know, we have one high school in our town. I can't remember what the exact population is, but uh, I think the total number of transactions in our school district last year was right around 600. So it's not huge. Um, so I, but the way I look at it is I could leverage that smaller town, the smaller state, and I could reach a bigger percentage of the people. So um, basically just, the relationships I already had, my sphere that I already had, <clears throat> I just dove deep into that. And I said, all right, these people already like me and trust me. Um, let's just change the conversation to real estate. And it was, it was literally as simple as that. And once you get a couple clients that way, then you can kind of build on that and, you, and create more relationships and you can see where you can leverage what you're doing in a small area or a big area. So that's, that's the beauty of this. It could be scaled up or down. It doesn't really matter. Um, to just be more present, have more conversations, and turns into more clients and more more transactions. Ultimately, that's what we all want, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it sounds like your business it relies on face to face, human touch, handshakes, eye to eye. Are you using KV Core to help you, uh, you know, set those meetings or send emails and newsletters <clears throat> or anything? We the use um, we use Commission Zinc. Okay. Um, I. You know, I, we were given a, with the XP, I don't think we're doing it anymore. We were given a, a free platform of that uh, maybe two years ago. Um, I went ahead and I paid for the broker platform because I saw the value in it. And I, I really believe it's it's the Ferrari of CRMs. And, but KV Core, I've worked in it too. It, it does the basics and all that does exactly the same. Um, but yeah, absolutely. So we, all of our clients, our, our database, everything's in uh, sync we can set reminders to stay in touch with people because that's the problem where as you grow, you have to be intentional about your follow-ups and, and what you're doing. I mean, if you're, if you're closing 90, 100 deals a year, you're gonna forget some things unless you have a powerful CRM, a powerful tool to keep you in line. So the first year or two that wasn't as important, now it's definitely important to keep, a, to keep everything on track. Um, <clears throat> You know, I've grown now. I have an admin. She can use um, on her end of, of, of sync and keep everything moving through a pipeline, so we always know where everything is. Um, so yeah, I do leverage that now. I don't think you need to, but the sooner you, the sooner you do, the better off you'll be. The more organized you'll be, and the more organized and disciplined you are, the more freedom you're going to ultimately have. You know, the more time you're going to ultimately have. And, and I, I have to echo that because especially, I, you know, you, you could forget the people you met like three years ago, yep. but in five years, they're probably going to buy or sell a house again. Yep. That's you, want exactly front, you want to be in front of them. That's a, and that's where I'm at, where if I'm in, um, I'm in my third year, starting my fourth year of real estate. So that time's coming. So, I, you know, I have to be intentional with how I'm staying in touch with all my clients. So when that fifth, seventh year comes around, I'm the first person they think of. And I've already done, uh, there's a couple of clients I've already done multiple trans transactions with or done transaction with um, some people and then also sold their parents a house. And now I'm working with a cousin of one of the same family members, you know, and it's always because if you're there in front of them and it doesn't have to be obnoxious, it just has to be intentional. And um, 
you know, if you're there in front of them, they're going to think about you because <clears throat> like you said, you buy a house seven, five to seven years later, you're going to sell it and buy another one. Um, but what happens in the meantime, in the middle, just say on the second, third year, they hit the lottery, right? And now they're, now they're looking to buy a million dollar house. And if I, if I just collected my paycheck and moved on, they're just going to go to the next agent. You know what I mean? Um, so, uh, and actually I've, I've been fortunate enough to get to meet and spend some time with Jason Abrams. I don't know if you know who he is. Um, yeah, I met him here. He was in Denver, um, mm -hmm. came in for an event and the title company invited me over. Really nice yeah. guy. He, he's the man. I, I'm lucky enough to have, I have his cell phone number on my phone. I could text him anytime. And, and uh, he actually was the one that kind of brings a couple of these things to light to me. And it was really, for me, it's perfect timing because as I'm getting into those first few years, I could really do the right things now to take the business to the next level. And which is ultimately what I want to keep doing. <clears throat> awesome. Now, as an icon agent, how, how many deals a year are you doing? Cause icon, I, we can, we can <clears throat> put up the stats of what it takes to qualify for icon. Uh, it's 3 million in sales and then it's plus, uh, I think it's 20 transactions and a certain amount of money put in on top of the, of your cap. Yep. Um, so you have to cap and then hit the number of transactions, but how, you, I imagine now you're kind of exceeding that the minimum. Uh, what's your, what's your annual volume looking like in terms of number of deals or, um, this or 2018, it was me personally was 45 transactions. Um, and it was somewhere around $11 million, 11 to $12 million in volume. Um, I know I capped in May. Okay. Uh, hit icon in November or October. Um, now my, my calendar, my year is the calendar year. My anniversary is January one. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I, I just reset. So now working to, and I should, I should cap about the same time, um, maybe a little bit sooner this year. Um, and we've, I've since grown a small team, a very, very small team here now, um, with, with, with a partner and it's, uh, you know, so we have other goals there as well, but, um, I still totally intend to hit icon again for the third year in a row, um, awesome. this, this year. Yeah. Now what's, you say you live in a small town, 6,000 people for your high school. That must mean fewer realtors too. So how are you getting the word out about EXP? How's rec what do you, what's your recruiting mm -hmm. approach at the moment? <laughs> or your, I should say your sharing approach, right? Yeah, not enough, honestly. Okay. Um, it, it's something I should have spent more time on, but I was a little bit more hyper focused on building my real estate business. So you uh, got to pay the bills. <laughs> yeah, it, and that's really what it was. I kind of put my head down and just worked. Um, now organically, I've brought a couple agents on. That's been that's been amazing. It's not these massive massive deposits like some people get, but you know, a couple bucks every month, it's great, you know, covers, you know, the bigger bills that I have and uh, you forget about it and it, it's amazing. Um, my, <clears throat> I guess, uh, tactic on recruiting is more like if I, it, you know, I'll mention it to agents, especially agents that I really like if, if it wasn't a great uh, situation or if it's not a good fit, you know, for our culture, there's no reason to bring that up, right? We want to have the best agents. Um, I'll have a conversation if they want to move forward with it, then great. If not, no big deal. Um, but I've had more people reach out to me kind of seeing, um, what I've done. I'll share certain things on social media and, you know, we're all, we all have realtor friends on our Facebook and, um, this year, it is past month. I've had more realtors reach out to me and say, Hey, can we meet and let's have a cup of coffee. Tell me a little bit about EXP. Um, and they've been some pretty substantial agents in our, in our area. So, um, I just kind of let it go organically. Like you said earlier, you're either going to see it or you don't, um, you know, I'm going to just keep making money and, and, and building my business and all that stuff. And in the meantime, um, I, and I think because I have a presence, I have a lot of relationships with a lot of local realtors because I do uh, a good bit of business with them. They, it seems like they're starting to come to me and ask questions now. So that's great. You know, and what I love about that's that part of your story is it's so kind of counter the myth about mm -hmm. EXP that I hear in the marketplace, right? Yeah. That EXP is only about recruiting. You don't have to produce. And I mean, from just kind of doing quick math in my head, it sounds like your average deal is probably about 250, 225. Yeah. Some right around 225 is our average price point in my yeah, area. So, I mean, you're, you're, getting, you're, getting to, you're getting to 11 million the hard way. Right. Yeah. Like there's some markets where it's like a million dollar average transaction in San Francisco or something or Denver's yeah. even four fifty. Yeah. So you're out there cranking, you're doing forty five deals a year, mm -hmm. barely talking to people, and people approach you 
because you're a producing agent. Yeah, and, and that, so that's the conversation. Like, you get to be this good with EXP as your training, right? Yep. Yeah. Why aren't you with one of these other franchise firms with the big name, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's an awesome story. And that's what I think you hit the nail on the head. That's what I think starts the conversation is like, I don't, I don't have to go with, you know, the big red balloon or the maroon signs to, to be a top producer or, or to know things. Um, you know, so, uh, and I, and I know those agents, I have the agents that were in my pre-licensing class and, and they're with whoever they're with and, and they're not as, they're just not as successful. Um, so it, it ultimately doesn't matter. I think it's, it's all about the agent. It's all about relationships. People want belly to belly relationships. If you care about what you do, if you care about serving the community, it, it's your business is going to grow. Focus on value first and everything else will take care of itself after that. That's, that's what I believe in everything. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now 45 deals a year, there are stock rewards within within EXP for hitting for hitting goals and for closing yeah. transactions. Are you doing the the five percent deposit or how's your oh, absolutely yeah your, that, that, that's a no brainer. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell people about it. What's what's the equity? Yeah, program? so um, basically every transaction, every uh, every commission check, um, I purchase. I take five percent of that and I purchase EXP stock at a twenty percent discount. Um, it ends up in my price point as being a couple hundred bucks a transaction and it's not, it's not a big deal. I don't, I don't miss it. It's you know, never, I forget about it never know it's there. Um, but you know, with everything else now I can log into my enterprise and I have, I don't know, what is that? 11, 12,000 shares, something like that just stocked up, you know, and, and, and it's great because a whole lot of that is just stuff I purchased. So it doesn't have to be vested. If I, God forbid I have an emergency and I have to do something, I have to pull from it. I can, I, I could, I could grab it. If, you know, um, if <clears throat> something catastrophic happens in the world there, you know, I, I have some money there. I have, I have a nice safety net. Um, and you don't get that anywhere else. And I literally just got that for just doing my business. I would do the same business at any other brokerage but I would have nothing to show for it. I, I couldn't purchase the company's stock every, you know, I don't have that option. I, you know, hitting capping, hitting icon, you know, getting all those gifts. I, no one else gives that to you. So um, at the end of the year, I have a lot to show for, right? right. <clears throat> Where if you're with, if you're at another brokerage, you're starting back to zero. And I love the analogy I heard a couple of weeks ago. It's like renting versus owning, right? So if, if you're a real estate agent and you don't have any kind of ownership or you don't get any kind of rewards or revenue share or anything like that, um, at the end of the year, you're back to zero and you're literally starting all over again. And think about it. We're in our real estate space. We renting versus owning. If you own a home, you're paying equity into it. You you're building your investment up every year after year after year. If you're renting, you're paying someone else's off. Yeah, and that's, you can compare the two side by side. You know, I haven't heard that analogy before, but that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And yeah you it, I mean, a really, lot of light bulbs go off in people's heads when you say that to them, especially real estate agents. That's what we talk about all the time. And they're like, oh, wow, that's a, that's a good way to look at it. You start to see the gears turn it. Yeah. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to borrow that one. <laughs> Absolutely. It wasn't mine. I saw it on a, on a video on YouTube. It was another uh, EXP agent. I'll have to go back and find her name. And uh, it's saying, I'm like, wow, I got to start using that. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, invite her on my show. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's it's, it's amazing. Like, you know, you're you're with a firm three years. And there, you know, there's one other firm that does profit share. We do revenue share, which is completely different. Uh, no other firm really offers that. I mean, you can go buy stock on the NASDAQ, but you're buying it a hundred percent. Very few agents have the discipline to do that. But here you've been in business three years and eleven to twelve thousand shares. Yeah. I, I really don't know of many opportunities. I don't know of any opportunity. And that's kind of why I think EXP mm -hmm. really revolutionized uh, our industry. Yep, most that. definitely. Yep, mo mo most definitely. And, uh, and because I can look back in the past 12 months, and I really, I, I didn't make any big commitments. I, I didn't say, oh, I have this money set aside. Let me go take this risk and, and buy a whole bunch of this company stock. You know, it didn't feel like I did anything. In it, but I could just look back. And like I said, at the end of the year, I look at my enterprise account and wow, look at all that. that that's incredible. Look, look at what I paid into it. Look at what it's worth today. Yeah. At the very least, because you're, you're, you're buying a discount. Um, so the next day it's worth more, you know? Um, and, and it's, 
it's something I'm in for for the long game. I'm not worried about what it's doing today or yesterday or you know anything like that. Um, I'm more interested in what's going to happen in five to ten years, and maybe I start having a retirement plan and, and and that sort of thing. So it's it's exciting, very exciting. Amen to that. <laughs> Uh, so anything else you want to share, like anything off the top of your head? One of the things I like to dive into mm -hmm. is kind of your personal why. Uh, personally, you know, for me, money's not my motivation for joining EXP, but yeah. putting money behind me so I can focus on what's important in life is. And yeah. doing real estate the way I've done it for the past 16 years, I just stay on that hamster wheel, just trying to do more deals or increase my price point. Um, I just want to put that whole game behind me. And I see that this is a, as a way to do that. Pardon me for that. Um, as a way to do that and uh, focus on things that really matter in life, uh, you know, family, serving the community, serving my church. Kind of what's yep. your what's your why that either drives you to serve your clients or your why that drives you to serve, uh, you, you know, with or to, you know with any XP? Um, you <clears throat> it's you know, this is something I struggle with, right? Finding one thing, but I think ultimately it comes down to you know putting the effort and time in today so I don't have to later. And, and that comes down to, so I can spend more time with my kids so I could, um, so I can give, give them opportunities that maybe I didn't have or you didn't have. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, that, that's really, and I'm, I'm a, uh, I have two small children, uh, Charlotte, my daughter is five, uh, Jerry third, the third, my son is a little over a year. So, you know, and I, I'm not getting any younger. And uh, I think about right, in 10 to 15 years when they're in high school or they're graduating high school, I've got to be in a position that when that time comes, I could just spend maximum time with them, you know, with sports or be present in, um, you know, big monumental things, you know, in, in their life. And I have, I have that freedom now to a degree and, and I just want to make it more so, so, so I can, I can grow and build that throughout the years, not just be in 10 years. I have to do the same exact thing every single year because I'm starting from zero every year because I have nothing to show for it. Cause I'm not building any other residual income or I, I have no, you know, nice stock retirement, uh, sitting there. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So Our kids are three, four and six and I'm not getting any younger either. And you know, you, you do start looking at that. Like, well, sure, I could sell real estate until I'm 75, but do I really want to? You know, yep. do I want to die on a listing appointment? Yeah, <laughs> and I, I know those people, and I'm sure you do too. Yeah. When even I look, I'm like, I don't want to be doing this when I'm your age. Right. Um, or you oh, know, and, and, <laughs> yeah. There, there's a ton of different avenues. I think that no matter if you're a real estate agent or in sales, or if you make a decent income, there's different avenues you could take different vehicles that you know, to make other, you know, other money. But I just feel like the EXP business model and the culture it's cultivating is I don't have to get off track to do uh, different or more. Um, I could stay in my business. What I know is real estate and relationships. I can stay in that forever, you know, and, and I, at a certain point I can start to remove myself from it. And sure. that, that's what I'm really excited about. So when I look ahead, uh, uh, in a decade, I get excited because I know what, what comes. Um, I heard somebody say one time, most people underestimate what they can do in 10 years and overestimate what they can do in a year. <laughs> so, it, you know, having a little bit of uh, forward thinking, and I, you know as well as I do, 10 years isn't that long. It, you, know, especially when you have kids, man, the years go by quick. Holy cow. So there, the days go by slowly and the years go by quickly. <laughs> it's hundred percent. It's insane. Um, but anyway, so yeah, looking, looking at, uh, 10 years ahead, I'm super, super excited. Yeah. And this, this to me does restore the joy to real estate. Um, sure. because I look back, you know, when I was six years into the business, I'm 16 years in now at the time we record this and, you know, I didn't, I didn't really have a whole lot of joy looking forward. I said, yeah, I can grow my volume. I can grow my income. There's hundred percent upside. Mm -hmm. There's also 200% downside. Um, but you know, there's no limit, right? The sky's the limit, but yep. you start hitting some, sitting some natural ceilings and you're just like, well, maybe there is a limit, right? Maybe there is yeah. like a, 
I'm only so much I can do on my own. But what if I had a team with me? What if I had an army with me? What if I could help other people help yep. themselves? That that really creates a lot of joy. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you just touched on something. One other thing that I would th I think is worth mentioning in this conversation is when you get, when you first get licensed. I had people, not a whole lot, but a couple people in my ear saying, "Hey, most people fail in real estate." You know, most agents are, you know, they get out of the business in two years. Um, uh, most agents can make more money working at McDonald's, you know, and that that's true. I don't know what the, you know, NAR statistic is. I think it's the average agent does like 3.4 deals a year or something like that. I think that's pretty accurate, you know? yeah. I mean, and that, that kind of bothers me <laughs> because it, I don't feel like there's any reason that has to be that way. Um, you know, I, I did it and I didn't do anything special. I didn't buy anything. I didn't join uh, brokerage with a whole bunch of promises about things. I didn't start on a team. Uh, I think I see a lot of people make that mistake. They go right off into a, in, into a team thinking that's how they're going to get fed and they learn that's not the case. Um, you know, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't buy uh, um, a whole bunch of Zillow leads and I didn't go broke trying to build my business. Um, so I, I think that, that uh, 80, 90% failure, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be that way. And I'm a, uh, if you're, you know, you've been with EXP, whatever I can do to give back and help agents, I, I do. I'm actually, I, so I've done my class in, in the cloud a couple of times. I've actually been chatting with Brad Anderson here the last couple of days um, about doing it again next month. And we just started the conversation on, hey, can we do this? on a regular reoccurring basis. Can we give this class once a month? I'm stoked about that because right. now I'm like, how many people can I reach to help if they're stuck doing three to six deals a year and I can get them to 12 and 15 in our business model. That's a great living. That's I mean, awesome. that's a, that, that's an incredible, that's an incredible uh, living. I know it, it, you know, in our price point, I think around right around 30 ish deals, I think is, is a hundred grand somewhere maybe the high 20s, 20 something is, is who doesn't want to make six figures? That's everybody's first, you know, first uh, monumental, you know, um, income is like, I want to make six figures. I know that was mine. Yeah. I never made, I had never made that before real estate. So um, it could change just a ton of lives. And with our business model, you don't have to do, you know, you don't have to do 50 deals to get to hundred K, you know? Um, so that's, that's one thing that's really important to me. And I love, love helping people kind of realize a couple things. Cause I really think most agents are just a couple little intentional activities off from breaking through their own ceiling. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And one of the, just to, to wrap up here, I know, um, you know, some people I talk to, they're like, Oh, I'm just not a recruiter. I can't do EXP because I'm not a recruiter. Yep. You don't strike me like you're not recruiting. You're not talking to anybody. Mm -hmm. It just kind of comes to you organically. Um, yep. and when it comes to you organically, how are you sharing like the seven minute agent builder link or what, how are you just like bringing people into the fold and, and just, cause there's, yeah. there's so much to share, right? We have tech, yeah. we have stock, we have revenue trees, we have all this <clears> stuff. What do you kind of, what's, how do you talk about it? Yeah. I try not to focus so much on the stock and the revenue share yeah. um, because I think that sets other agents up to say, that's all you care about, or that's the only good thing. Um, you know, I think the training we offer every week is, is massive. I think the, um, uh, the split is, is better than you'll get almost anywhere. Uh, you know, to have that split and only pay $50 a month technology fee you don't get that anywhere else. You can have, maybe you can get on somewhere and have a 90% split, but you're going to spend the money somewhere else. It's going to come out of your pocket every month, or it's going to come out of your transactions every, 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 your paycheck, every transaction until you reach a certain thing. You're going to pay for it one way or the other. So I, I focus more on telling people that, Hey, this brokerage is built to help the agent, not to help the broker. Um, and, and I, and I think that is ultimately what we're all after because, and then, Oh, by the way, we have options to purchase stock. You, you get stock rewards for just doing your business, your first closing of the year. Hey, here's a couple, here's a couple shares for you. Congratulations. I'm still going to close one every year to start the year off, Yeah. but why not get something for it? You know, when you do your 15th, 16th deal, um, that's, that's what our price point is around here. About 15 deals, you'll hit your hundred percent. Get another little, 
um, a little stock reward. Bring an agent on, get another little stock reward. If you're a top producer, hey, here's your $16,000 in stock given right back to you. Um, those are all things that I've done and I've not tried. I've not, I wasn't focusing on the stock or I wasn't focusing on the reward. I was just focusing on doing my business and that was, and that was a, a great bonus that you can't get anywhere else. And that's more or less how I spin it to people because I don't want them thinking, oh, they, all they care about is, because I've heard it before too, all you care about is recruiting and it's all about stock. I actually talked to an agent on the phone the other day um, and he just, you know, once he heard I was with the XP, he's like, oh, they're such a joke and all they care about is this, all they care about is that. And I just laughed it off and, hey, it is what it is. That, that's somebody that just hasn't saw it yet. He'll yeah. see it eventually. It, it'll, it'll be a year or two from now. He'll see it eventually. Um, well, and part of my motivation in doing this show is to counter some of what I see out there. And what, you know, people have had bad experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're going to have a bad experience at, at a restaurant. You're going to have a bad experience buying a car. You're going to have a bad experience going on a date. It doesn't stop you from dating. Nope. <laughs> You'll go on more dates when you're single, right? I'm married. I'm out of that pool. Thank God. I love, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't, it doesn't stop you. Um, no. But it can give you a bad taste and you've got to, you've got to kind of warm it back up. But the show, the intention with it is to, to, to share people like Jerry, you know, who, like you, who, you know, you're real people and you're doing real things. You're doing real work and you have real motivation behind it too. And, and those are the people who are succeeding in our, in our company um, and making and the culture and creating that culture where you're just like, look, I'll share what I have with anybody. Yep. This, whatever I'm doing, you do. Like it, it's no secret sauce. No, uh, no. You know, and there's, there's plenty, exactly. there's plenty to go around. Yep. That, no, that's, that's exactly, exactly the way I handle whether it's just, I, I'm an open book and I'm as transparent as it gets. And, and I, it doesn't matter to me if you're in my market or not, or if you're in my brokerage, or not, I'll help you, you know, yeah if you, Hey, how are you doing this? I'll share with you what I'm doing. Um, because I do believe there's plenty at the table for everybody to eat and there's no reason to be any other way, honestly, because someday you're going to open your eyes to something, um, like people that are going to want to make the move to EXP and they're going to remember that, that I was there to help them. And, uh, you know, you get it's just a mind shift. That's all it is. It's just a mindset shift and you see it with agents that are, you know, you know what EXP is only about these things. And then when they see it, it's just a total mentality shift. And that's, that's great to see happening. Um, and it's really starting to happen here in our market here in Delaware, more and more of the top producing agents are making the switch are really seeing it. Um, as a matter of fact, there's a guy that when I joined EXP first got licensed and he, he gave me a ton of shit for, uh, joining EXP and, uh, just not that long ago, he gave me a call. Tell me, talk to me about this. How does this work exactly? Yeah. And, you know, it took three years, but now he understands it. You know, you're really not going anywhere. This really is something that can work. So that's, that's a fun conversation to have. Yeah. And yet, you know, you bring it up. It's, it's, it's been brought up without even bringing it up too. As part of the culture of EXP is we're never going to bad mouth another firm and we're never going to mention a firm by name yep. because there's no point, right? Mm -hmm. Like, <clears throat> take the high road and everything we do take the high road and the culture yep. um, share be nice be good like you go you go to that the, the core values wheel and for some companies that's just something pretty that designer put together but I think that's really true and at the heart of the XP is yeah the core, core values yeah it certainly is and uh, were you at EXP con no I'm not but I'm really looking forward to going to Orlando to, uh, or to Florida Thanks. June uh, yeah, oh, so, yeah, the, the uh, yeah, shareholder summit. So uh, EXP Con in New Orleans was the first event, EXP event I ever went to. Um, and I haven't you, seen the light yet. <laughs> yeah, you can, I mean, you can tell. And, and the culture and the type of agent that comes over to EXP is just, it, it's incredible. And I left there telling myself, I'll, I'll never miss it again. I mean, unless, God forbid, some catastrophe happens, you know, I'll never miss the shareholder or um, EXP Con uh, and I'm going to shareholder summit this, this June, um, for the first time as well. And I expect much of the same thing, it, but just the culture they built, the type of agent that comes over, it's, it's incredible to be around. So it's, you definitely got to, uh, got to check that out next year. Awesome. Well, you know, you just gave me an idea. Maybe I'm going to put together a top cloud agents dinner or a cocktail hour or something oh so the on the show can just get together and uh, meet in person. I think that'd be a lot of fun. No, that'd be incredible. Absolutely. Yeah.
Um, so, hey, Jerry, uh, before we go, how can people get a hold of you? Um, so, like I said, I'm, I'm an open book. Uh, you can email me, uh, jerry.sheets at exprealty.com, J-E-R-I dot S-H-E-A-T-S at exprealty.com. Um, friend me on Facebook, if you're not, Jerry Sheets. Um, I mean, you, is it okay to get my phone number? Absolutely. If you want I mean, to. feel free to call, text anytime. My number is 302-293-9167. I'm on Instagram at Jerry Sheets. Um, that's pretty much all the social media. I don't mess with. I'm on Twitter, but I don't mess with it too much. Um, but like I said before, I'm an open book. I'm as transparent as it gets. I'm as real as it gets. Um, if you, if anyone wants to ever kick anything, kick any ideas around, bounce some stuff off me, or maybe ask me about one specific thing, um, I'd be more than happy to to help or give you my input if that means anything to anybody. I'm still surprised people ask me for for advice, but you know, I'm more than happy to give it. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. You're very humble, uh, but you're doing a great job. I appreciate you being on the show. And folks, if you know of anybody else that you think might be a good candidate to be on the show, uh, you know, somebody who's working in the cloud, uh, my name is Rick Jansen. My phone number is 303-589-2320. And you can find us online at topcloudagents.com. Hey, thanks so much, Jerry. I really appreciate it. It's been great meeting you, and I look forward to meeting you in person. Absolutely. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. All right. Have a blessed day. Yep, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.